Civic update number one. Uh, global time attack just around the corner. We need to make some progress on this Civic. Let's go ahead and check out what we got going so far. The main thing that I'm starting with on the cage are these tubes, and you might think that's a little odd. I've never seen that before, but these have several purposes. The first and most useful, basically, is what we call a pin stand. You jack the car up, instead of using regular jack stands, you have a special made stand that will slide in through the side skirt instead of having to take the side skirts off to get the jack under the car. Um, it's just going to make it a lot more easy and useful to work on. The second thing, the pedal box and the seats will mount to these tubes. There's going to be a third tube in the center. We haven't put that one in yet. I haven't finalized its placement. But the stock floor in these cars isn't much to brag about. It's, uh, it's pretty flexible if you see. I've got the bracing cut out, but I just wasn't happy with it. One thing I've noticed is the majority of cages I see neglect to add any, we'll say, driver protection or support from the underside of the car. Um, you know, not all crashes are irregular. You bump up against a wall or somebody hits you from the side. A lot of times the car ends up flipping up on a tire wall and if you take a big impact from below and your seat is mounted to the floor it can literally lift the driver's seat up until his, uh, his head contacts the cage or the roof of the car and that's something we want to avoid so once I have this third tube in the seat mounts will be rails going front to back and that's gonna give us some intrusion protection from underneath the car and the front tube if I end up in a wall it'll keep the, the tire from intruding in and possibly breaking my legs or feet you know we don't want to think about it but I'm gonna make it as safe as I possibly can so trucker just made those several good points about the floor being really flexible and how the pin stands are gonna work and so I have an example of one of the pin stands here uh, this one is actually for a dirt bike so uh, imagine this scaled up here we have a pin stand and so what this will do uh, with the larger diameter tube that will go inside of here. Uh, it'll just slide right in and then it'll try kind of cam over and then that stand will in fact hold the car up. Once he places the middle uh, the middle tube in there that will be the jacking point. You jack it up from there, slide the pin stands in, good to go, ready to work on the car and it'd be super safe. I don't know if you guys noticed in that last clip where he was talking about the uh, intrusion protection from the floor if you saw that spindle in the background remember in the first video we we had a mention of that and so now here it is a lot further along in the process and it's just amazing and truckers gonna go ahead and uh, break down what we have so far so we've got the spindle a little farther along from last time and this is a 3d printed mock-up of the upper ball joint piece it will be machined aluminum but before I machine them, I want to make sure that everything fits, clearance is good, um, geometry is correct. You can see we've just got a couple tack welds on it right now, but we've got an inner structure. Everything keys together to properly locate it. Um, once this is welded up, the actual key pieces help for uh, strength. Um, next step is put it in a wheel, make sure everything clears the way it's been designed to, and then we can go ahead and weld it up. So here we have the spindle just basically sitting in a wheel. These aren't the actual wheels I'll be using, but they are 15 inch. And you can see some clearance. Everything's going to be a tight fit. But let's pull this out of here and we can show you the new brake setup. So originally I had planned on running these size brakes, which are quite a big upgrade from the stock style little brakes that the car came with. Remember it's a little economy hatchback so nothing serious but I've decided instead I'm going to go ahead and step up to a, a much thicker rotor, an inch and a quarter and a much larger caliper. So you may wonder why I decided to upgrade the brakes substantially and it's because this car is uh, going to have a Rotrex supercharger. It's going to make around 450 wheel horsepower and certain tracks like Road Atlanta it's going to be capable of about uh, 150 miles an hour down the back straight going into turn one, uh, 10A it's going to be a pretty heavy braking zone going down to about 50 miles an hour so I decided uh, better be safe than sorry and go ahead bigger with the brakes. What is this bucket here? 
It's all the sound ending material that used to be on the floor. The dry ice method worked like a dream. You can pick it up at any uh, local grocery store. Dry ice all over the floor. Tap it with a hammer. Boom. Comes out. So, I think that was a pretty substantial update. And uh, as you can see, Trucker's making crazy headway on this thing with the uh, looming deadline. Still, again, trying to make it to the, the first Global Time Attack event of the year. Uh, we'll see You know how the build goes. Next update. I'm sure you're wondering what that's going to be. It's going to start working on the cage. Um, that's a, a big safety thing, and it's going to be tying the main hoop into those uh, intrusion bars, and it, it's going to be really neat. The material actually came in today. Here, uh, Here's the tubing for the cage. So that'll all be getting incorporated here soon. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned. Subscribe. Like. Uh, it is linked down below, Trucker's website. There are blog posts on there. A little bit more frequent updates in the videos just because they take a little bit longer. Uh, so please follow on there. Again, like, subscribe, share with your friends. Trucker says bye. See you guys. Bye.